All right, so we're going to look at one more limit property where we're going to try to write down a proof just so you can see how this works. This is a good one to look at because the argument that used here is a very standard one, it's a very common one if you're moving on to more advanced courses in mathematics, if you're taking an analysis course. This is the type of argument that you're going to need to use all the time, so it's, it's good to see it at least once. Um, if, you're, if you're taking this calculus course because you're, you need it for a math credit and you're going to move on, probably skip this video, um, move on to the analytic methods. Um, for those that are interested, let's see how this works. So like usual, we're going to start by choosing an epsilon. Okay. Now, we might kind of do a little bit of scratch work over on the side. We say, okay, um, suppose, so what do I need? I want f of x plus g of x minus l plus m, right? That's the thing that I want to make less than epsilon, all right? Um, right? So we're looking at our, our, the function we're dealing with here is the sum of these two functions, right? The limiting value is the sum of the limits, right? So limit of a sum is sum of the limits. Makes sense. So we, we kind of look at this and we say, well, how can we, how can we rearrange this? Well, we could write this as f of x minus l and then g of x minus m. And the reason this is helpful is that if we know this limit exists and it is equal to l, we know this limit exists and is equal to m, right? Then given this epsilon, I know I can choose a delta that works here, right? So there's going to be some delta so that if, if x minus c is less than delta in absolute value, this is going to be smaller than, than epsilon or some multiple of epsilon. And I can find another one that works for this, except I need the individual absolute values for the two of them. Right now I have it in this one big absolute value. Fortunately, there is a well-known property of absolute values called the triangle inequality. Okay, and the triangle inequality says that for any real numbers, a and b, the absolute value of a plus b is always less than or equal to the absolute value of A plus the absolute value of B. All right, so let's see how we put these together. How do we put these ingredients together? Well, since the limit as X goes to C of F of X is, is L, That means we can find some, let's say, delta 1 so that if x minus c is less than delta 1, the absolute value of f of x minus l is less than epsilon, right? Similarly, we can find delta 2 such that having x minus c less than delta 2 and bigger than 0, um, that's going to make oops, the difference between g of x and m less than epsilon. Okay, um, except that's, that's not quite going to work because we're going to have, you know, the absolute value of this plus the absolute value of that. We want the two of them to add up to something that's less than epsilon. So in fact, what we do is we say we don't want this just less than epsilon. We actually want it less than epsilon over 2. Same thing here, epsilon over 2, okay? All right, so how do we proceed? 
we let delta be the minimum of delta 1 and delta 2, right? And we're going to suppose that the absolute value of x minus c is less than this delta in absolute value. All right. Well, since it's less than delta and delta is the smaller of the two, that means that absolute value of x minus c is less than delta 1 and it's less than delta 2. Therefore, absolute value of f of x plus g of x, subtract l plus m, okay, that's equal to the absolute value of f of x minus l plus g of x minus m, less than or equal by the triangle inequality to the absolute value of x minus l plus the absolute value of g of x minus m. And these in turn, by our assumptions, are both less than epsilon over 2. And adding epsilon over 2 to itself gives us epsilon, right? And that completes the proof.